Hello, selamat sore Bapak dan Ibu and everybody ya. Yeah. <laughs> uh, saya namanya David dari Singapura, berbicara bahasa sedikit aja. So I will use uh, English, okay? So uh, my uh, my I'm from Singapore and what I do is I run a company that is in education. Okay, I started as a music school because I play guitar and I play piano and I also play drums. So I teach people how to play the guitar, how to play piano, how to play drums, everything, yeah. Okay, so uh, after that, then we start to open up a coding school. We also have a school for art. We have a school for teachers also. We teach teachers how to teach. And then uh, we start in Singapore. Then after that, now our office also is in Jakarta, in Indonesia. Okay, great. Okay, so uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I understand all of you are... Teenagers, correct? Yes, correct. Okay, good. So, um, I'm going to share with you about Singapore, okay? And, uh, which is actually, um, today I'm quite excited to share with you about Singapore because I want to share with you some things that you might not know about. Actually, most likely you will not heard of before, okay? So, this is the map of Asia. Okay, my question is, do you know where is Singapore? So, Singapore, right, is actually... Here, just a small little dot, that's all. That is Singapore. So you can see that Indonesia is very big. Indonesia is from Sumatra, from Java. Then there's Bali, Lombok, uh, and all the way to Papua. And then on the top, there is Sulawesi, and uh, there's Kalimantan, right? But Singapore is just one small little dot. And then we are surrounded by Indonesia as well as uh, Malaysia. Okay, so I will. Uh, what we're going to go through today is I want to share with you uh, what's the history of Singapore, then um, also um, how we speak, and also what are some of the attractions in Singapore. Okay, so this is Singapore, all right. This is the actual map of Singapore. Then um, I stay around this place. Can you see there's a Ang Mo Kio in the middle, okay? Singapore is an island, right? So it is not connected to Malaysia or Indonesia. We are just surrounded by Malaysia and Indonesia. Now, you can see here there are two bridge, bridges that link Singapore to uh, Malaysia. Okay, The bridge is very important. I'll explain to you later why is the bridge important. Okay, Then on the south side, uh, Selatan, yeah? this is yeah. Bintan and Batam, it's Indonesia. So from Singapore, if I take a boat, okay, you can see there's a, like a Sentosa here, this Selatan, yeah, Sentosa. If I take a boat, uh, it will be maybe uh, 40 minutes just to go to Bintan. So it's very, very close. Yeah, okay, I drew this. Okay, so that's Sentosa. Okay, so the thing is that, um, okay, do you know that Singapore was once a part of Indonesia a long time ago? Okay, so we are actually together uh, as a family, literally. Okay, so how are we related? Um, the very first time that we were colonized, that means colonized means that uh, we are ruled by somebody who is not from our country. We were ruled by the Majapahit uh, Empire. Okay, so this is the Majapahit Empire. It is a very, very big empire. That means they ruled a lot of places. And then the interesting thing is they also controlled Australia. So uh, this is Kajamada. I'm sure you heard of him. There's a university in Jogja called UGM, right? University uh, of Gajamada. So he's the prime minister to uh, this king called Hayam Waruk. And then there's the king of the Majapahit dynasty. He's called Hayam Waruk. Yeah. Okay, so uh, our very one of the very first times where we got colonized was by the Majapahit Empire. Okay, right now the next time round, maybe about sixty years later, there was a company called EIC, East India Company. Okay, so East India Company actually is a very very bad company. They do a lot of bad things. So East India Company, right, they have a private army. The army they have, uh, they have over 260,000 soldiers. And they sell drugs like opium, things that are very bad. And also, right, they 
pretend to be selling things to the country, but what they do is they take over the country. And Singapore is one of the countries that they took over. Okay, so uh, a person from East India Company was Sir Stamford Raffles, and he's considered the founder of Singapore. And Sir Stamford Raffles used to stay in Jakarta. Okay, so uh, the British ruled Singapore for a long time. Um, and then the next time was when the Japanese took over. That's more than 100 years. The British ruled uh, Singapore for more than 100 years. Okay, so... <laughs> Okay, so in 1942, right, the Japanese, they took a bicycle and then from Thailand, they cycled all the way down to Singapore, the whole army of Japanese. Yeah. And then uh, the biggest or the chief of the Japan army at that time is this guy called General Yamashita. Okay, and what happened is they fought the British and then the British lost. And this is a very famous picture of the Japanese uh, taking over Singapore from the British. So uh, the Japanese ruled Singapore for three years. And the three years, right, the Japanese were very, very cruel. They were very bad to the Singaporean. Okay, and after three years, right, what happened was the Japanese, they lost the war. And then they have to give Singapore back to the British. Okay, as a result, the Japanese were very proud, right, and they cannot surrender. So a lot of Japanese soldiers in Singapore, uh, they committed suicide. That means they killed themselves because they just don't want to surrender. Okay, so as a result, there's a lot of ghost stories in Singapore about Japanese soldiers. Okay, okay so I will share with you two stories from my friends. Uh, one, one was in the <laughs> army because in Singapore, all of us have to go through army. And then another one is from my business partner. She is from Japan. And when she came to Singapore and stayed in the hotel, I will tell you these two stories about the Japanese soldiers. Okay, so uh, one day, my business partner, she fly from Japan and stay in a hotel in Singapore. And then um, this is about seven years ago. Yeah. And then after she stayed in the hotel, when I meet her for breakfast the next morning, she said, uh, David, can I stay in your house tonight? So I said, what happened? Is everything okay? Uh, and then she said, everything is not okay. She said when she was sleeping last night, and then in the middle of the night, suddenly her bed started to shake. Yeah. So when she woke up, she saw a Japanese soldier shaking her bed and asking her, can you bring me back to Japan? Yeah. Then um, another story is that Last time, me and my army friends, we were camping out in the jungle. Yep. So uh, about 5 a.m. in the morning, my friend said that he heard a lot of people marching. So he immediately put on his uniform and put everything on to go outside and join because he thought he was late. Yep. So uh, the very moment when he got outside, he saw a group of Japanese soldiers. Then immediately he ran back again and went back to, to, to try to sleep. Yeah. So anyway, so uh, as Singaporeans, this is quite normal for us. Okay. Okay. So after the Japanese uh, ruled, we started to rule our own country ourselves in 1945. So the first person to rule Singapore is this person called David Marshall. He was called the chief minister. Okay. This is a picture of Singapore in 1945. Okay. Um, if you can see, there is a red colored circle in the background, okay, anybody want to guess where is that place? Okay, anybody want to try? Okay, symbol. Okay, actually that place is, uh, okay, it's not Batam, close. Actually that place is Malaysia. Okay, good try, uh, Evan. Uh, so you can see Singapore is very, very small. So this picture is on the south side. The mountain is on the north side of Singapore. So Singapore is very small. You can see Malaysia even from the south side. Okay, so uh, you will, kalau Gunung Krakatau lebih jauh, yeah. <laughs> After that, 1963 to 1965, we merged together with Malaysia. So you can see in this picture, there is the Prime Minister of Singapore, Lee Kuan Yew, and the Prime Minister of Malaysia, Tunku Abdul Rahman. So you can see from the shot also, the picture on the left, that Singapore is starting to become better because now we are talking about keeping Singapore clean instead of trying just to make money. Okay, but the merger with Malaysia did not last long. So after two years later, 
Tunku Abdul Rahman say, okay, I think it's better that Singapore and Malaysia have to be separated. Okay, so from 1965 until now, we have been a country by ourselves. Okay, has anyone uh, recently, right, I found Lee Kuan Yew, our Prime Minister, on Tokopedia. Okay, do you, have you seen Lee Kuan Yew on Tokopedia before? Okay, I'm serious, he is on Tokopedia. Okay, so Lee Kuan Yew now is a plant. In Indonesia, they call a plant and uh, they name the plant after Lee Kuan Yew. Okay, so, uh, bukan, yeah, so this is not Lee Kuan Yew. Okay, so this is Lee Kuan Yew. Okay, so can somebody tell me what is Lee Kuan Yew doing in this picture? Oh, he's thinking. Okay, uh, okay, Frank, okay. Uh, any other answers? Okay. Okay, very good. Actually, uh, Mr. Lee Kuan Yew in this picture, yes, that's correct. He's crying. So Letitia and Evan, you're correct. Uh, what, what is Galau again? Sorry. Oh, desperate. Yeah, yeah. He's crying and also he's Galau. Some, uh, 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 menangis dan galau, yeah? So, why is he crying? Because he's very, very sad that Singapore separated from Malaysia. Yeah. Uh, yes, correct. He's also bingun, yeah? yeah. So, um, he's very sad because he felt that Singapore must stay with Malaysia. And Singapore and Malaysia has a lot of very close family and friends. And when Singapore separated from Malaysia, Lee Kuan Yew felt that he let everybody in Singapore down. He felt that he disappointed everybody. Yeah. And uh, the luckiest thing that ever happened to Singapore are two things. Okay. First one is Singapore separated from Malaysia. And the second thing that Singapore was very lucky was to have Lee Kuan Yew to lead the country. Yeah. Okay. So now the problem is that Singapore has a lot of problems, like a lot of problems. Now, as a country, we do not have agriculture. We don't have enough water for everybody to drink. And then everybody is from all sorts of countries, from China, from India, from Philippines, from Indonesia also, from uh, Sri Lanka and so forth. So the question is, how are you going to get all these people to work together and try to make this country successful. It is very, very difficult. So, okay, remember I told you about the bridge that links Singapore and Malaysia. Okay, this is the picture of the bridge. Okay, now in this picture, can you see the red box? The red box, there are three pipes. These three pipes are very important because these are the pipes that bring water from Malaysia to Singapore every day so that Singaporeans can have enough water to drink. Yeah, so as you can see, Singapore really has nothing, no enough food, not enough water, uh, and we are just a swamp land, like a land that's with there's nothing. Yeah, yeah. So how are we going to solve this problem? So over time, right, Singapore has tried to solve some of these problems like water, food, and so forth. Okay, I will share with you how uh, one of the things that we have done to try to solve this water problem is quite interesting. Okay, so now. You know that when we go to toilet, we go to do our business, like to pee and so forth. So all the water in the toilet will go to a factory. Yeah. And what the factory do is it will recycle the water. And you know what we do with the recycled water? We drink the water. <laughs> so everyone in Singapore drinks recycled water. And then we repeat again the same thing. Okay. So actually, we are drinking our water from the toilet, so to say. So another one is we have a lot of limitation for our land. We don't have enough land in Singapore. Okay, so what we do is that we build taller buildings. Okay, so in this picture, it's what we call HDB flats. Okay, HDB flat. So 80% of the Singaporeans stay in the HDB flat. Okay, and then uh, the average size is about 80 square meters. And then the price for 80 square meters is about $300,000 uh, US, about there. So this is how the inside of a HDB looks like. Yeah. And then at night, when you look outside, it's all buildings. You cannot see uh, any nature at all. Okay, now you remember when I mentioned about the problem, one of the problems in Singapore is that we have a lot of deaf people, like we have Malays, we have Chinese, we have Indians and Filipinos, we have Caucasian and so forth. So to ensure that everybody get along together and everybody can get to know each other, there is a rule in HDB. The HDB must have 
a percentage of Chinese, a percentage of Malay, a percentage of Indian people, and so forth. It must be mixed. It cannot be entirely Chinese. Now, the other thing I want to explain to you, this is maybe the most important part of this presentation. Okay, I'm going to ask you a question later. Now, in Singapore, we don't have a lot of people. Indonesia has about 250 million people. But in Singapore, we have we started with maybe 2 million people at the most. So what we need to do is we need to increase the value of the Singaporeans for them to make more money. Okay, so let's say, for example, all right, a person works in McDonald's and he makes uh, lima ribu for one hour, for example. A person who works in a fast food restaurant like McDonald's maybe earns about lima ribu for rupiah for one hour. And then there is a lawyer. The lawyer works for one hour, but he gets one juta. Both of them spend the same amount of time, but the difference is that one makes very little money and one makes a lot of money. So what is the thing that makes a person make so much money and what is the thing that makes a person make so little money? And that is the thing that Singapore uh, was very, very aggressive to address this thing. Okay, so I'm going to ask you the golden question, the very important question. My question for you is, what is that thing that you think you can do to increase your value? So even if you work one hour, you can make more money than somebody else. Okay, so can somebody, uh, let's, can, can you all answer uh, the question then? Yeah, Paputra, actually that, that's correct. You can be the most productive uh, hamburger maker in McDonald's also, but you still make the same amount of money. Yeah. Okay, so if you, uh, if you're still thinking, never mind, I'll tell you the answer, okay? The answer to increase your value is education. Education is the most important thing for you to do right now, to learn new things and to become very good with what you're doing. Okay, so in the 1960s, um, every, the government was very, very aggressive to keep driving everyone to go to school and to learn and to become better, to learn more things and to become better. Okay. And another thing that uh, the government was very strict was they have a lot of regulations so that people will listen to the government. Okay, so in Singapore, we have a lot of fines. Okay, so, um, okay, does anybody want to guess what these people are doing? Okay, very good, correct. These people are being punished because when they are outside, they just throw and uh, throw the things on the floor. Let's say they finish eating something, they throw the wrapper on the floor and they were caught. So Singapore is very strict with this. So after a while, uh, Singaporeans, they start to realize, oh, I better listen to the government because if I do something wrong, I'll pay like lima juta. And after that, I got to go to the street and start to sweep, you know, and then it's very embarrassing. Malu, yeah. Okay, so this is how Singapore works. We are all about a lot of regulation and a lot of fines. And uh, a lot of Indonesians, when they come to Singapore, they say, wow, your place is very clean. But what they do not know is that we have been paying a lot of money to keep the place clean. We pay a lot of fines ourselves. Now, in Singapore, uh, okay, I'm going to finish in about uh, 10 more minutes, okay? So, but I want to share with you, like in Singapore, when we speak, like uh, we speak English, we speak Chinese, but there's this particular language we speak, we call it Singlish. Okay, so I want to teach you a few words in Singlish. Okay, do you know what is FOMO? FOMO is fear of missing out, right? Uh, fear, fear of missing out. You're scared to miss out on something. Yeah, yeah. So in Singapore, we call it kiasu. Okay, so if uh, let me give you an example. Okay, wow, why do you want to go to school at 5 a.m.? Don't be so kiasu. Okay, so I see Evan, Evan, can you hear me? Okay, uh, okay, do we have any volunteers? Pipin, yeah, Pipin, okay. Okay, Pipin. Can you say kiasu? Um, actually, I want to give some question. How big is Singapore? The big What's that? Um, I actually want to give you some questions. Actually. Okay, How sure. In Indonesia, and is there a college school at Singapore? Because I want to get a college school at Singapore, actually. Oh, you mean you want to study in Singapore? Yeah. Okay, actually, uh, wait, are you in elementary or junior, senior high? Oh, elementary, yeah. Okay, so Nasia, right? Okay, Nasia, well, if you want to study in Singapore, you can. And then um, what you need to do is, uh, 
Well, there are a few ways you can study in Singapore. You can apply from the Ministry of Education. There is a website. There are a lot of Indonesians that study in Singapore. Okay, and there are also a lot of Indonesians who study, after they study in elementary, they go to junior, senior high, and then they go to National University of Singapore. Okay, and then when you get to National University of Singapore, you'll be surprised. Uh, there's a lot of donations from Indonesian uh, persons. Okay, so for example, if you go to NUS, there's a place where all the students stay. They call it the James Riyadi Hall. James Riyadi is an Indonesian, um, and then uh, he's a Lipo group, right, if I'm not wrong? Yes, so uh, there's another man called Mr. Tahir. Uh, he's also a very, very rich person. I think he gave, I think, about 10 million or 15 million to NTU. Okay, so there's a lot of Indonesians that stay and study in Singapore. It is very, very possible. Just depends really on whether you want to do it or not. That's all. Okay. Okay, so... I'll just continue quickly so that uh, we can go for your questions and answer. All right. So now the next one. Okay. So let's say, right, if you eat a uh, kropo, yeah, and then when you bite into the kropo, it is very soft. It's no longer crispy. Okay. The word we call it is lao hong. Yeah, very good. Okay. So we we'll say something like, hey, this biscuit is no longer crispy. It's lao hong. Like that. Okay. okay. And then the last word I want to teach you today. Yeah. The last one I want to teach you is uh, Astaga, okay? So in Singapore, we call it Walao eh. Okay, so if you can mix uh, Walao eh and Kiasu also, right? So you can say that Walao eh, don't be so Kiasu lah, something like that. Okay, so I hope you learned some English today. It's very useful, uh, especially when you go to Singapore next time. Okay, so okay, so uh, I'll just continue with uh, my final thing is just to show you some attractions, okay? So this is Marina Bay Sands. It is very, very famous around the world. Okay, so on the top, okay, if you can see, uh, let me see. On the top, right, there is a swimming pool. Okay, so this is a swimming pool that is very famous. Yeah, okay, so you can see the top here. This is the top. This is where the swimming pool is. Okay, so um, you can see that the hotel has an SG and a heart. When did they do this? Yeah, they just did this recently to uh, show support for those, uh, the COVID situation. Okay, so uh, my friends always ask me, do you go to the top? and swim at the swimming pool, I say, yes, I only swim for about one minute, then I'll leave. Okay, so they say, why is it uh, there's a problem with the pool? But I say, no, it's just because I'm very scared of heights. That's all. Okay, so, okay, then the next one is uh, this picture. So you can see there's a Singapore flyer, which is also very uh, famous. Yeah, and on the bottom right, you can see gardens by the bay. Yeah, so the Singapore flyer, I think two years ago, the people were sitting inside and the Singapore flyer got stuck for seven hours. So there were, about two years ago, people were sitting inside the Singapore flyer and then the Singapore flyer stopped moving. It stopped working for seven hours. So my, my friends also asked me, have I been to the Singapore flyer? So I also say no because I'm scared of heights. Okay, so, okay, so these are the few attractions and maybe the last attraction I will share with you uh, is not the zoo, but it's called the night safari. Uh, because I think that the zoo actually in Jakarta is nicer than the zoo in Singapore. <laughs> yeah, but the night safari in Singapore is something you should visit because uh, it is very beautiful the way they put the lights at night. Okay, so that's all I have to share for today. I hope you uh, enjoyed the sharing. Thank you, Mr. Tahir. Thank you, Mr. Tahir. Yeah, thank you. Telling us all about Japan and Singapore. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you.